All right, everyone, welcome back into another props video. Give me a touch on the top prop bets today for Flex Friday on Price Picks. That's going to be the concentration. But if there are good prop bets and underdog, I'll bring them up for you guys as well. Mostly going to be concentrating on NBA, but all in all, just going to be touching on the best bets that we have available today to make the best Flex Friday slip that we can possibly. So starting out with the NBA slate uh, today, uh, another pretty big slate. So that is going to be exciting. Uh, as I'm recording this right now, we are not getting any fantasy score props, which is unfortunate. Uh, if anyone's a nine to five member, they probably noticed that that has been pretty successful over the past few days for the prop bets that are uh you know favorable over a 54 percent chance to hit um obviously that'll be updating throughout the day hopefully we do get some good uh fantasy score props but looking at it with the first game we got the knicks versus the magic a one and a half point spread 226 for the over and under we know that mitchell robinson is out but we also know that jericho sims is still out uh for the magic joe ingles uh, he's out uh, markel folds he's out uh, gary harris game time decision and then jonathan isaac is a game time decision as well now i do think it's worth noting wendell carter is back for the magic but he is not really playing that many minutes for them right now mo Wagner is still getting about 20 minutes or so as well so really and then you got goga there as well uh you know not really playing that many minutes but still uh if isaac's back it really makes all the bigs besides Wagner and benchero not really that appealing and then jalen sucks has been someone that has been playing well recently but his minutes are capped at 30 so to me the magic are just a team that we should be staying away from now i'll take a peek here and i'll show you guys the ev best that we are currently getting by all means if you guys like any of these go ahead and use those uh but we'll go on and get into the nba specific tab so that i can show you guys the magic and again uh nick claxton is gonna be a good ev bet right now it's really the best one that we have going it's basically the exact opposite of yesterday where yesterday we had so many great ev bets to start the day which all in all given how i uh, yesterday went where we got some massive edges and for nba purposes uh michael porter jr and clay thompson both chalked on props and also dfs all in all we know that that's the correct process all in all kind of expect to have some regression um i mentioned that two videos ago where we were running pretty hot nba wise for about a week and a half um so so it, it does suck though two big edges like that with clay and also michael porter jr where you know they got a pretty significant bump a little bit unfortunate there that they missed but on all really good day yesterday for what's worth the uh, the jet stack that i recommended ended up uh, crushing so you know good day yesterday as a whole but yeah looking at today like the magic we're probably not getting any good bets for them and maybe a little bit of Banchero for under 7.5 rebounds I guess I could get behind that that's not terrible and then Jalen Suggs I actually don't mind for over threes let's actually take a deeper look at both of those so yeah looking at Banchero for uh under 7.5 rebounds let's just take a deeper look at this so he is someone that on the season does average 6.8 so obviously already that number seems to be a little bit high and to me you, you tack on the matchup with the Knicks and I know they're banged up Mitchell Robinson's not there and whatnot uh, but all in all I would still say that his rebounds probably do have a pretty good chance of being under 7.5 so to me i actually do like that prop bet now the other one that we are getting that i think is decent is actually jalen suggs for over 1.5 three ball attempts just because he is someone that is typically not shy to shoot three balls now last game against philly that game was a blowout he still played 28 minutes which is strange to me but one for two only shot the ball uh two times from three ball we can see other games 10 5 4 9 so a little bit difficult to trust on a nightly basis and i don't think we're going to need to go there like we're going to have other prop bets better prop bets that pop up throughout the day uh let's go ahead and get into the new york knicks then and so here we're not getting that many great prop bets as well if you guys want to roll with the hot hand and jalen brunson you could certainly do so he's been someone that's been playing extremely well recently uh the average line for his points rebounds and assists would be at 36.7 so some of the sports books probably a couple of them are favoring the line at 37 and so it's about a 53 or so percent likelihood for him to get over that not terrible uh to me this matchup with the magic is kind of just one i'm okay to just gloss over pass up on so let's go ahead and move on into the next game that we are getting uh looking at we got the nets versus washington washington is not favored to lose by that much only six points which is kind of crazy to me so maybe we're looking at them um the brooklyn nets uh or sorry this game is about 242 for the over another uh the brooklyn nets we saw that we're getting a good prop bet there with nick clack for over his points rebounds and assists and i'll touch on that in a second he is currently a game time decision though so something to monitor there you also have duran sharp playing extremely well for the brooklyn nuts as well so um do think it's worth monitoring a dfs as well if he is out he is someone that has been playing some backup center minutes, so that could force claxton into maybe you know one or two more minutes in that game so let's go ahead and start out with brooklyn so yes the best prop bet that we're getting right now is actually gonna be looking like nick claxton for over 25.5 points rebounds and assists i think this is very much gonna be because of the matchup with washington we know washington uh they're, they're just a good matchup for everyone, but you're really attacking bigs against them. Uh, Nick Claxton, though, minutes-wise have not really been there. If we knew that he for sure was going to give us 30 minutes, we'd be all for it. But no, he's been playing 26, 28, 
26. Really, the minutes are difficult to trust. So does the matchup with Washington really outweigh the kind of risk that we have here and don't get me wrong like he's been kind of close to getting the over in a few games here but we need him to get 30 minutes and so all in all i don't know i almost disagree with the data here and i kind of hate when that happens but all in all it's probably one that i'm perfectly fine to stay away from also the <laughs> the nets did some weird stuff in the last game look at someone like cam thomas guys cam thomas was having himself a very good game last game he only played 12 minutes because the head coach wanted to get some run for the backups and honestly it kind of worked out they were able to keep the game close enough for long enough against the box but cam thomas you know was like four for nine but for most of the start of the game he was like four for six shooting the basketball so very weird there um you know if he does get more minutes and honestly the nuts might be a stay away um I, I think we're going to expect Spencer Dimwitty to play a lot of minutes. I think we're going to expect Cam Thomas, Mikhail Bridges, uh, Cameron Johnson, all those guys that typically would play a lot of minutes. I think we are expecting them to play minutes. But all in all, given what happened last game, it has left a sour taste in my mouth. So I don't know if we like, I don't know if I really want to go in on it. Now, all in all, the Cam Thomas one, if he is going to be playing his normal minutes, which is about 30 plus minutes, nah, I shouldn't say that. It's it definitely there. But if we get closer to, the 30 plus minutes then i would expect him to get multiple uh three ball attempts up closer to like six or seven so with that guys let's just go ahead and move on into washington seeing if we're getting any good prop bets for them today and a little bit for tyus jones in this game tonight um i don't know if we need to force it tonight specifically i know the game is projected to stay close i don't mind that gafford you could run out now he played 30 minutes in the last game um barely missed his over of 21.5 points rebounds and assists in the last game and if you would have told me that he was going to get 30 minutes i'd have been like yeah we're just we're just betting him heavily um um, all in all, he has been pretty productive points wise. Now, the match with Brooklyn is not one I would necessarily say we would want to attack, but, and I think this is a good example of it 22 minutes in the last game against Brooklyn, three points. Yeah. Um, there is some concern there and then five. So, yeah, all in all, I don't, I don't think we have that many good prop bets here. So, two games in maybe one good prop bet uh, that we were getting so let's go ahead and move on into the next game here guys so looking at it we got uh, the Raptors versus the Celtics about an eight point spread so not the best there uh 225 for the over and under uh so low scoring game we do need to get news on Jalen Brown and also Tatum okay both of them are currently questionable because of that I doubt we're going to get any props like maybe those two but that's about it now Tatum is someone that played last night and played in the OT game really went off okay uh definitely the reason why they won in that game he's questionable it, it it would make sense for him to sit back in a back to at back played heavy minutes in that game uh Jalen Brown you know if he can be back we'll see you know he's currently questionable in this game it to me it would kind of make sense for him to play in this game it was the front end of back to back I think that's why I said now it would make sense for Tatum to sit out on the back end of a back to back so all in all, that's kind of my expectation. But all in all, we don't know really truly what to expect for boss. If both of them sit, Derek White would be someone that would just go off. Same thing with Porzingis. Uh, and then really Al Horford as well. We have seen that when Porzingis or Tatum are out or off the court, Al Horford really crushes. And now last game, he did get 37 minutes. Didn't really do much, which to me was very shocking. And we know NBA, nothing's ever a lock. Really, prop ends, not, nothing is ever a lock. But if you would have told me that he was going to get 30 plus minutes in that game, I would have thought that he would have crushed uh, averages, like the over for his average. Averages. And then poor Zingas really started the game out cold. And actually, his uh, he had he had a late three uh, that really hurt one of my bet slips that I had um on a different site that was tilting but yeah he would have a good game as well again really tough to gauge what we'd want to do because those are two very high usage rate players if they are both out obviously Porzingis obviously Al Horford obviously uh Derek White and Drew Holiday they all get a big okay but it's, it'd be pure speculation uh right now to give you guys any takes on that and really I don't think we're going to get any Toronto Toronto Raptors props as well because well we need that Boston Celtics news so again let's go ahead and move on into the next game guys so looking at we got the Bucks versus Cavs six point spread 244 the over and under so a very appealing game I would say Giannis currently a game time decision I think we're expecting him to play for the Cavs uh Sam Morrill Donovan Mitchell game time decisions if they sit we're looking at Craig Porter to have a good game uh the lines that we were getting, though, to me would suggest that they expect Donovan Mitchell to play because if he sits, I would imagine this game has a very high likelihood of blowing out. It's already a pretty good spread because Evan Mobley and Darius Garland are out. Now, if you guys have been following the channel, you know that we have been getting some pretty darn good lines on Jared Allen 
with Evan Mobley out and maybe that's something we can go back to we're just not getting those props just yet and really this matchup with the Bucks is not one that I typically want to be targeting but yeah if Jared Allen does get 35 plus minutes again uh there's a good chance especially with Donovan Mitchell out, there's a good chance that he's undervalued today and so in terms of usage Jared Allen's usage goes up about three percent with Garland Mitchell and Mobley off the court that might not seem like much but it is for big he, he gets to about like 19 percent uh for usage rate with those three players off the court his per 36 production is 18 points 15 rebounds and 5.2 assists so really the assists go up a decent amount there all in all we have seen the markets not correct to this just yet for him stepping up into a bigger role it's been a a very good sweet spot for, both for me and dfs and props betting uh the last couple of games again though this matchup with milwaukee is not the best i will say however if Giannis is ruled out i do think that that would present a very good uh, spot for Jared Allen. All in all, though, we're expecting Giannis to play. It's kind of a mute point. Uh, with that being said, we are getting prop bets for Donovan Mitchell again because if he is active, his lines are not going to change. If he is inactive, everyone else's lines would change. Max Struess would get a bump. Max Struess averages about uh, 19 points per 36 with uh, Mitchell, Mobley, and Garland off the court. And then Craig Porter Jr. has been playing pretty well as well. But all in all, the only Cleveland Cavaliers player that I would want a piece of in general tonight is going to be uh, Jared Allen. But that's assuming that they keep the game close enough for long enough. Looking at Milwaukee, we are getting some decent props here, I would say uh Beasley for under 3.5 rebounds uh, we can see he's projected to get three in this game he's someone that I think we could be looking at for the under rebounds uh Lillard is okay again about a 53 percent chance that guys we want to be looking at prop bets that have a 54 percent likelihood or better and I would say if the game was uh projected to stay close where we knew that Lillard was going to get closer to 37 minutes I'd feel better about that but the fact that the game has a chance to blow out is a little bit concerning there so yeah all in all the bucks you know we're really not getting that much there beasley slightly lillard slightly uh Giannis has been playing extremely well um with mobley off the court you, you would kind of expect him to have a good game as well again though let's go ahead and move on to the next game we have the kings versus the hawks one point spread extremely high scoring game about 251 252 another high game total one of the highest game totals ever uh so looking at it both teams are going to be healthy except for deandre hunter being out we have seen bay has been someone that has been playing well for the hawks so looking at the kings guys i will say that this is probably going to be a spot in which we do get some very good fantasy score props just in this high uh total game and so that's something i'm going to be on the lookout for right now we really aren't getting that many good props though uh all of them are you know pretty decent like 52 percent likely to hit but none of them are like yeah we need to go out of our way to target them now i will say keegan murray has been someone that has been playing more minutes recently the issue with keegan murray is that he's been such a headache if this game is going to be this high scoring though i will say there is a good chance that he does get over his uh points rebounds and assists at 23.5 to me that's a decent one to me that'd be one that we could potentially chase he is going to get up a lot of three ball attempts right we need him to literally do the three for seven thing that he has been doing um all in all i see that as a game stacking play there uh all in all again i do think we we kind of want to wait and see uh what fantasy score lines we're getting like kevin herter over nine points i don't mind uh sabonis over 7.5 assists i don't mind you know i kind of agree with the data there probably 52 percent chance to hit all in all you know we don't want to be banking on props that have a 52 percent chance to hit for the hawks a little bit better uh jalen johnson uh 9.5 rebounds and assists we can see dejounte murray 9.5 rebounds and assists let's take a peek at both of those so yes jalen johnson is back as well and he came in and instantly played 30 minutes and i think that's that's important to know because with deandre hunter off the court uh jalen johnson should continue to get a, a lot of run and if he's getting 30 plus minutes in this game that's supposed to be high scoring in this game that's going to have a lot of shot attempts up to me i do think that there's a great opportunity for him to get over 9.5 rebounds and assists now we're mostly banking on the rebounds part there and we're banking on him getting 30 plus minutes but all in all that's a prop that i don't hate again maybe more of a game stacking opportunity there and then looking at dejounte murray as well 9.5 rebounds and assists again if this game's going to be that high scoring chances are he's going to get some rebounds he's going to get some assists like all in all again these are not the the best likelihood of prop bets there, but it, they do make sense there is some correlation there in a game stack so now jumping on into the sixers versus the rockets about a two-point spread 224 for the over and under looking at the injury report here jabari smith has been ruled out as well as dylan brooke that might not seem like much but it is uh for uh the sixers and beat is out batum is out as well we kind of know what to expect there for the sixers uh let's go ahead and jump into both of these teams i think we are getting some decent lines and so starting out with the sixers i will say you know 
I am perfectly fine going back to the well with DeAnthony Melton, especially on underdog there where it's, uh, his lines had 23 for his points, rebounds, and assists. You guys saw in the last game that his lines were too low. Uh, Vegas kept really bumping those up. And the reason why this felt like such a free square, and I hate using that terminology, but the reason why it felt like that was because with Embiid off the court and with Batum off the court, we knew that he was going to get those closeout minutes, to get those 36 plus minutes. I mean, it was highly likely that that would happen. And so to me, I think we can bank on that again. Like it should happen. We have seen that happen. His per 36 production is 19.3 points, 6.2 rebounds and 5.2 assists so he is there for his over points rebounds and assists just on points and rebounds or just on points and assists so all in all i really like the edges that we are potentially getting with melton again today um again we're it's a bet on the minutes being there and we have seen this when batum and when and beat off the court it is melton closing out the game and that's been the biggest difference between his minutes like uh, when they were healthy and we see this game log here not getting over 30 minutes very difficult there right to be productive uh, unlimited minutes and so is it more thin today is it less of a free square yes I, I don't even want to say it's a free square today but all in all I still liked his over today especially in a game that is a pretty appealing game especially in a spot where we probably do want to be game stacking now Maxi was a very big disappointment in the last game guys just didn't shoot the basketball enough I think I had his over at like 28 or 29.5 points clearly that did not work out did not get the, to the free throw line as much as we'd want um nine for 18 didn't exactly shoot the basketball well but do love the fact that he is getting around 20 shot attempts up. If you look at his per 36 production, does average 31 points per 36 with Embiid and Batum off the court. I mean, that's massive, right? Averages about 23 shot attempts per 36 with him off the court. So all in all, I kind of am okay going back to Maxi today. It's kind of blindly trusting it, if you will. And for what it's worth, we take a peek at the props that we're getting for Maxi, 27.5. Again, like I'd be fine using that mostly in a game stack. Uh, points, rebounds, and assists, 38.5. To me, that's a little bit too high to really go in on. A lot of his production is just in uh, scoring with him beat off the court. He actually gets a slight bump down in his assists. Averages 2.5 less assists per 36 with Embiid off the court. And it makes sense, you know, Embiid getting the ball to Embiid's a few easy buckets a game. And then looking at Tobias Harris, Tobias Harris was part of the reason as to why uh, Maxi did not have a good game because Tobias Harris had an awesome game. And so you look at Tobias Harris per 36 production with Embiid and Batum off the court, averages 20 points per 36, okay? Averages 7.5 rebounds per 36 and 3.2 assists. And so really today, I would say the lines that we're getting on Tobias Harris are correct, especially when you look at the matchup, like kind of a difficult matchup against Houston. So all in all, to me, I don't know if we need to be going in on Tobias Harris. And we can see as the game progressed, guys, his, he got a little bit worse as the game progressed. Um, Still 23 shot attempts. That's a lot. I'm actually curious. Only averages 16.3 shot attempts per 36 with Embiid and Batum off the court. So all in all, him shooting the basketball that many times seems like an outlier. But also, you know, if Max is not going to be shooting the basketball, it's going to be uh, Tobias Harris. Now, Kelly Oubre is definitely interesting as well. He was someone that I thought would have a good game. He just had a terrible night shooting as well. One for seven. He's not going to be someone that gets a lot of minutes. Uh, that game was also a blow up. But if he's not hitting his shots, yeah, it's tough to really give him minutes. And it's tough for his overs to hit. On all, you know, you got a shooter coming in off of a poor night shooting. I don't mind targeting him his per 36 production is 19 points per 36 with him beat him but two the court we saw against miami 40 minutes in that game and then 29 against orlando again one game was a blowout one wasn't i would expect him to get 30 uh six minutes in this game we're not getting prop bets for uh Ubre just yet though i do want to just mention the rockets we're not getting any prop bets for them guys uh, but i do think the news that we got is pretty significant. So for Houston, again, Dylan Brooks is going to be out, which already he's a high minutes type player. That's about 30 to, let's say, about 22 to like 36 minutes. And then Jabari Smith being out is also very huge because he has been someone that has been playing heavy minutes. And it's really for the past like month, it seems like Tari Easton has been someone that has been questionable. I've been saying, you know what? If he's out, Jabari Smith is going to have a great game. Well, now it's going to be the exact opposite in this one. So with Brooks and Jabari Smith off the court, Tari Easton has the third most minutes on the team it actually goes Aaron Holiday then Jocelyn Tate and then Tari East Tari East however averages 14.8 points per 36 13.2 rebounds per 36 three uh, assists per 36 and not too big of a bump there uh, does average 2.5 steals and one block per 36 again now the question that you guys probably have is well will he get 36 minutes I'm gonna say I don't know <laughs> honestly I don't I would expect him to get 30 minutes or so again with Jabari Smith being out that is a lot of minutes and also with Dylan Brooks being out that is a lot of minutes and so I do expect him to at 
least get 30 minutes. And so I do expect him to get around 12 to 13 points to get around eight rebounds. And this is a decent matchup with them beat off the court. So all in all, I do think we're going to be looking at Tari Easton to have a great game. For what it's worth, guys, his per 36 uh, fantasy score is 44 fantasy points per 36. So definitely is someone that goes off. Jocelyn Tate is someone that I do think uh, will get a bump in this game as well. The question is, how many more minutes will he get? It'll probably be around 24. He was someone that was at the start of the season. Um, getting closer to 24 minutes and was being productive in that role much more of a uh, lower ceiling type guy like he's not going to get a massive bump like Easton's going to but all in all if he gets 25 minutes could be someone we're looking at and then kind of crazily the player that gets a big bump and this I think this is more with uh Dylan Brooks off the court is Jalen Green Jalen Green and this is a small sample size eh, it's not actually too bad it's about 129 minutes 15 percent bump in his usage rates which is crazy with Dylan Brooks and Jabari Smith off the court the question that we have with Jalen Green is how many minutes will he play again like um Dylan Brooks was out in the last game, only played 26 minutes, shot the ball 20 times, <laughs> had a good three ball percentage, six for 12, but eight for 20, not the best there. Still had 23 points in that game. Um, he is someone like per 36, does average 28 minutes, but all in all, man, that is rough. <laughs> that is rough. Uh, Fred Van Fleet's kind of been the consistent fantasy producer, uh, getting around 38 to 40 minutes. Uh, all in all, again, I think the player that we want to go in the most is going to be Tar Easton. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into the last uh, few games that we have. Uh, Hornets versus the Suns, very much blow up potential in this game uh about a 16 point spread 230 is going to be the over and under looking at the injury report bradley beal game time decision that would only add i think to the blowout potential uh looking at the hornets they're gonna be without gordon hayward they're gonna be without lamella ball mark williams game time decision now this was the exact same scenario that they were in yesterday and miles bridges played 33 minutes they did get blown out in that game he did not get his over 21.5 points because it was a blowout uh so there is that concern again with him uh you look at terry rogier he did not get his over points rebounds and assists again because it was a blow he did not get his 36 minutes or so uh all in all that's kind of giving me my expectation again for charlotte in this game as well uh to me the one player that i would want to go on the most would be pj washington but no his minutes have not been up and i would i would have thought that they would be with gordon hayward off the court so all in all it just seems to be a stay away brandon miller only 28 minutes so yeah the charlotte hornet to me and it's, it's crazy. Like, I'm going through this, and it seems like we just have a lot of stayaways. And right now, they're not giving us any props. I think that's because of yesterday. I think yesterday, their lines were pretty off, given the the ex expectation of the game and so all in all that yeah, we're just not getting that many good prop bets for short we're not getting any prop bets for short but all in all i think that's why because they don't want to put out some bad line on the flip side that we can take a peek at phoenix my initial thought was yusuf nurk for like over rebounds but they kind of put that up at 11.5 to the point where the data actually likes the under there and so again this is kind of a spot where i don't know if we exactly need to go in on it we are seeing kevin durant rebounds and assists at 13.5 uh, has a 53.52 percent chance to hit again this board has been a little bit tighter than I would typically like um, for a Flex Friday. Actually, that has been the case the past month with the Flex Friday board. Super weird. Uh, but anyways, I don't know if I like this one. Like we can see went off against Houston. Dallas has been doing pretty well prior to that though. And I think with Bradley Beal back, that could be another part of it where maybe he's not getting as many rebounds. Maybe he's not getting as many assists. Yusuf Nurk is going to be back in this game as well. So all in all, like the game blowing out, maybe only gets 33 minutes in this game. Um, I would say that's what you're banking on. If you're betting the under here, we can see underdog has already bumped it down to 13. All right, so we got the Thunder versus the Nuggets about a three-point spread. 236 is going to be the over and under. Looking at it, uh, the Thunder are going to be good to go. Denver Nuggets, they're going to be without Aaron Gordon again. And so really, I think we can all admit that the uh, Michael Porter Jr. prop was seemingly a good one that just didn't work out, right? The the books really kept bumping his props throughout the day. He just didn't need to shoot the basketball that much. And so personally, I'm actually okay going back to the well with him. We can see three pointers, uh, about a 53% chance for that one to hit 2.5 for the over there. Uh, points, rebounds, and assists at 25.5. Again, I'm kind of okay with that. Really, the hope here is that the game does stay close. And to me, we're not expecting like, Peyton Watson to get 14 shot attempts up again and 10 three balls up again. He's, he's someone that started out pretty hot shooting the basketball and then fizzled off. And then by the time, and like Jokic was 11 for 11, other players were just shooting the basketball well. So we didn't see the normal shot attempts that we would see from Michael Porter Jr. Literally two for three. It's not like he shot the ball terribly. He just did not have a role in a game that blew out really quickly. And so tonight, I feel like this is a jumping on opportunity. Like in DFS, I'll probably be playing a lot of him. Props betting, obviously, it's a little bit different where the pricing doesn't matter. The field not being on him as much doesn't matter. But let's just go over the data again. So with Aaron Gordon off the court, Michael Porter Jr. per 36 averages 20 points per 36. Again, that last game didn't need to get minutes. 13 less minutes than you would 
would have expected from him or at least 10 less minutes than you would expect it from him because that game was a blow up and I'm not going to say that he does get his overs there but it was very unfortunate that John Morant got rolled out for Michael Porter Jr. because then the game definitely had more blowout risk that did hurt Michael Porter Jr. in retrospect. I don't think that's very difficult to see. So I can talk myself into this, and I have talked myself into this. You look at his shot attempts with Aaron Gordon off the court, averages 15.2 field goal attempts, averages 7.7 three ball attempts per 36 with him off the court. Okay, so all in all, 20 points per 36, 9.9 .9 rebounds, uh, 2.5 assists. And so really, I kind of like all the lines that we're getting here. Probably would like points the most. Again, just expecting him to get more shot attempts up. I could run out points, rebounds, and assists as well. I think that that's a pretty good line that we are getting as well and guys just real quickly like don't get me wrong with Peyton Watson like I don't want to like downplay what he did he does get the most minutes actually with Aaron Gordon off the court on the team but he only averages uh 10.5 shot attempts okay and only 3.5 three ball attempts so like this was clearly an outlier game and heck he only played 23 minutes so he, like definitely an outlier there we go and jump into okc here uh we're gonna see that sga rebounds 5.5 53 percent chance that that's okay really all the lines that we're getting for okc currently are pretty good you know with Jalen williams with josh giddy being active and healthy uh tough to get onto any of them uh do you want to call it that like dort has been someone fantasy score wise has been popping up a decent amount this season that's something to be on the lookout for once we get those props now two more games here so portland versus the spurs uh yesterday it was pretty nice i took a risk with some props with malcolm brogdon and also jeremy grant that ended up paying out or working out because simons was ruled out and so the question that i have is is he going to be healthy in this game like what's going to happen really the the trailblazers roster yesterday was strange so aiden was out sharp was out we knew that that was expected their game time decisions today We've got to see if they're going to play or not wreath was someone that was expected to get some heavy minutes maybe not expected to start for them but he was a dnp in that game and so they really only had one center that they're running out and then simons was ruled out about 30 minutes before game time and so i would say there's no way that we're getting portland props yeah we're not we need to get the the injury news but to me this could be one of those spots where it is a massive edge spot again for props betting i mean these two teams just met we got to get the news on simons you know he was held out on the front end of a back-to-back -back. yeah it was tough to say if he's going to play or not but because of that malcolm Brodden had himself a great game and guys he started out terrible I was so down on myself for the first quarter of that game. Uh, Portland was getting blown out. I'm like, gosh, darn it. Uh, and then, yeah, he ended up going off. Uh, obviously, had a very good day shooting uh, from three ball. Uh, six for eight, uh, 10 for 19 total, 29 points. Very good game. Uh, you know, his production really isn't shocking especially if we get sharp and eight and out again i do still expect him to play 30 minutes i do still expect him to get a lot of shot times up but yeah he gets a massive bump with simons off the court and so it's risk reward if we get some prop bets for malcolm Brogdon and we haven't got news on simons just know that if simons is active it's going to hurt Brogdon, Brogdon or if simons is out it's really going to boost Brogdon a lot and all in all this is a pretty good matchup all in all you don't expect portland to be down by i think it was like 26 or so at uh, by the end of the first quarter you like you don't expect him to go that cold jeremy grant was part of the reason why they were able to come back nine for 21 one for five from three uh really got it going free throw wise 29 points 10 rebounds five assists you know he had himself a very good game as well and so again that's not really shocking with those players being out and then scoot henderson's another player that gets a pretty massive bump if simons is sharp and if aiden are off the courts he's going to get 36 minutes or so he is someone that did get in a foul trouble i do want to point that out i uh, got four fouls i think in the first half still Still played 36 minutes had six turnovers though obviously concerning there shot the basketball pretty well nah, i shouldn't say pretty well but a lot and ended up with 25 points so we like that aspect of it kind of lower on the rebounds and assists that you would think with uh simons off the court G does get a pretty big usage bump with simons off the court so that was a little bit shocking that he only had four assists so again just be on the lookout for it, guys because if we get news that all those same players that were out last game are out again we're gonna get some pretty big edges for portland and we should be getting spurs props i'm kind of surprised that we're not again it probably is because of portland like maybe potential blowout and whatnot we should be i am very confused as to why we're not for what's worth Wimby could sit out uh on the back end and back to back I kind of think that that was the expectation but he only played 24 minutes he's only been playing short minutes and so maybe he doesn't sit out on the back end of a back to back and so that that's another question like that's not gonna be in the injury report or not but if he does sit on the back end of back to back obviously Zach Collins gets a big bump we have seen the games where he gets 30 plus minutes and he just goes off I mean this is the sample size right here guys Dallas Chicago Milwaukee 
just dominated, right? So if we get news that Wimby is out, just come here and look at these props that were, or the lines that we had for Zach Collins when he got 30 or so minutes and just kind of gauge what you'd want to do there. Kendall Johnson has moved to the bench, which is kind of weird, a weird move. I, and I wonder if he would move to the starting lineup if Wemby is out. And then I also wonder if he would get like 35 or 36 minutes if that happens. Like to me, he is a big question mark. The only way I could really truly want to be on him is if he's going to be uh, starting again. And with that, uh, Vassal, uh, Sohan, I don't want to touch those guys, even if Wemby is out. And so we're going again to the last game on the slate, Memphis versus the Clippers seven and a half point spread 225 for the over and under so you know with the back end of a back-to-back -back, i kind of expect uh, john moran to be active in this game i do think it's no worthy to say that luke Kennard game time decision derrick rose game time decision that could be big you know they could finally be healthy ish you know uh, looking at the clippers Kawhi leonard game time decision which continues the annoyance of today guys because yeah we're not we're not getting any props for that game because of Really, we need to get news on Morant. We need to get news on Kawhi. Again, obviously, if those players sit, um, let's just talk through it again. Annoying day. <laughs> Annoying day. It really is. Uh, but yeah, so if Kawhi sits, we know he's been someone that's been getting around 36 minutes. We, we know what to expect. Like, it's going to be uh, Paul George getting heavy minutes, as he typically would, but just a lot more shot attempts going up for him. Uh, I think we could expect him to get around 25 or so points. The, the concern would be that this game could still blow out. And then James Harden gets a massive bump in usage. He's been playing extremely well recently. Maybe his assist takes a little bit of a bump probably gets a few more rebounds though a few more shots attempts up like I would expect him to get 20 plus points in this game. Uh, Zubak would be someone I think would benefit as well. You know, gain 30 minutes or so. Uh, so if Kawhi is out, obviously we like that. And then for what's worth, guys, looking at Memphis, if John Morant is out, uh, the question is, can they keep it close enough for long enough? Um, Marcus Smart played really well, but only played 23 minutes in his uh, game back from injury. Again, Derrick Rose could be back. Desmond Bain had a really good game in 25 minutes, 23 points. Again, the game was a blowout though. Only 25 minutes in that game. Like the whole fourth quarter, the starters sat. I needed... I needed needed Bane to get one more shot. I needed him to get to 25 points for a different another prop than Jaron Jackson as well. I needed a slight more uh, amount of production out of him as well. But all in all, we know what happens when Jaws off the court. And we, I think we kind of know what happens when Jaws on the court. It really becomes when Jaws on the court, Desmond Bain, John Morant, Jaws off the court, a little bit of Jaron Jackson, a little bit of Marcus Smart, but mostly Desmond Bain. And then just real quickly, we are getting some good college basketball props as well right now, guys. Um, This one's interesting right here for Burnett underdog had it originally at 17.8 which they bumped up to 18.5 which I find strange because we can see the percent likelihood for this prop bet to hit is actually 54 percent likelihood for the under to hit the projection data also is saying that so very strange that it was underdog to bump up their line and not prize picks to bump it down I don't I don't know what to do with that that's very strange this was going to be one that I included on my flex Friday slip and I still think I will but it's weird you are seeing though that we are getting two pretty good fantasy score prop bets right now we got where for over fantasy score the projection data really likes where that's kind of crazy to me but the average sports climb would have it set about 39 for a fantasy score and still favoring the over there and so at 35.5 that is a very good edge i think the concern everyone <laughs> is gonna have is uh looking at the game log it's been pretty ugly right very ugly uh only one game where he's gone the over now if you were to pull up their game log or his game log here we can see this game was a blowout only 20 minutes in that game other games 31 38 and this game does have the potential to be a blowout i want to call that out and so on all, in all it's, it's just strange that it's that big of a difference right uh but all in all i'm perfectly fine by that over and then we got mcdaniel for our under fantasy score uh very interesting here we are getting some underdog lines as well a much better bet than underdog and it's again college basketball is super strange guys the amount of discrepancies that we get um where it just really doesn't make sense it's always interesting and i get college football college basketball there are more difficult uh to predict and to really give lines on so we do see a lot more discrepancy uh, but this is fascinating so the average sportsbook line would have a set at 27. Okay, the projection data would like him at about 24.5. Underdog has a set at 29.85. Like that is a much better bet to bet the under there than it is to bet the under on prize pick. For prize picks purposes, we are looking for a flex Friday slip, however. And so I'm perfectly fine using that. But if this were any other day, maybe besides Taco Tuesday, um, I would just be saying we're betting that, but we're betting that on underdog. And then I did, did just hit a refresh as well, guys, Um, just to see if we're getting more. PJ Hall under fantasy scores is a good one. We can see that's much tighter than the other two. And then we're getting under assist here for this one's basically being favored as a push. You know, again, a little bit better ones. We are seeing that that Burnett one, and makes more sense now, not as big of an edge there. So, you know, no need to use that one. And then real quickly, let's get back into NBA. Uh, that's where we're getting the best edges right now, guys. 
guys it's college basketball and nba no need to touch on nhl there's some okay ones out there but right now uh rj barrett under fantasy score is seemingly a good one we know with rj barrett very much shot dependent if he's going to get this over he's just going to be shooting the basketball well given the matchup with orlando i could get behind orlando is a pretty good defense uh keegan murray was one that i mentioned i, I liked um for the over that the odds of that has actually shot up uh underdog it's a much better bet there on underdog and really guys it seems like we are getting some better edges on underdog right now i already mentioned the college basketball prop I mentioned like this jalen johnson one at 23 that's a pretty big edge there um it might not seem like much but a half is is pretty big that adds up nick claxton as well that is still popping up i don't know how i feel about that all in all i'm kind of we're kind of just forced into betting that or at least i am right now at, at this point in the day given the lines that we have out all right so jumping into my favorite bets for today uh, it is an interesting day. So, you know, I'm fine right now with those college basketball prop ones. Those are fine. Like we're getting some pretty big projected edges on those, even though it's kind of strange. This line actually dropped, which a little bit concerning. All in all, though, I'm, I'm kind of fine trusting it. RJ Barrett, less than fantasy score. Again, very much shot dependent there. Nick Claxton does worry me. The over 25.5 points, rebounds, and assists, but does get that very good match against Washington. The, the biggest concern I have is that he's probably only going to get 28 minutes. That is a concern to me. King Murray, I do feel good about. A little bit shot dependent as as well but in a very high game total we do want some exposure to that and that's why i'm okay running out jalen johnson as well a uh, very high game total i do expect those two key murray to probably get 36 minutes jalen johnson hoping for closer to like let's just say 25 to 30 minutes um and if they get those i feel pretty good about that all in all it's weird like not the it's the flex friday slates have been very tight at least when i'm putting out the video uh for flex friday i'm sure if i did it at in the afternoon it'd be much easier to give you guys that content and it's just kind of the nature of the beast uh and for what's worth and I, I hate calling out but it is useful guys like uh be on the nine to five cheat sheet it is available for ten dollars a month uh, before you place your flex friday stuff it's just worth looking at um access to that at 95 sport.com again it's going to give you access to the price based on your cheat sheet for just ten dollars a month thank you guys for watching uh give a like and subscribe hit that notification bell appreciate you guys being here let's have a good slate today and as always let's keep cashing